Hi and welcome back to another Mr Talbot Maths video and this week's problem is the one that you can see in front of you and it's all about finding the radius of this pink circle. Now the problem is we have a yellow semicircle uh, and we've got a green semicircle inside of that where the green semicircle goes from the bottom left of the yellow semicircle to the centre of the yellow semicircle and the radius of the green semicircle is 1 which means, therefore, that the radius of the yellow semicircle must be 2. Now we've got a pink circle which touches um, the diameter of the yellow semicircle and actually it's a tangent to the yellow semicircle diameter. Um, it is also tangent to the curved side of the green semicircle and it is also um, touching the yellow semicircle, the curved part that is. And the problem, like I say, is finding the radius of the pink circle. Now, before you start working on this problem yourself, what I've done to make it easier is I have put on some key points that you might want to refer to in your solution if you ought to put it down in the comments below if you've got a different solution to me. Right, now, without further ado, I'm going to go through my solution in three, two, one. Okay, so the first thing that I did is I put radii onto my circles and semicircles and I labeled them if I could so one and R respectively and what I also did is I put a right angle uh, where the radius of the pink circle meets the diameter of the yellow semicircle. Now the reason I did that is because a radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees. Okay so that's the first main thing and I would always recommend putting radii on anything to do with circles, semicircles or full circles because they're almost always key to your solution. Now the next thing is we've got this tangent here. This tangent at the point G is a tangent to the yellow semicircle as well as being a tangent to the pink circle which therefore means that the radius from the point D to C must be 90 degrees to this tangent. Now that's important for the next part. This tangent at G is tangent to the semicircle and the circle. Okay, now D to G is a radius of the pink circle and so must be at right angles to G. Now we know um, from O to G must also be at right angles. So we've got two lines that must be at right angles to this tangent and they must go through G. Now using what we know about straight lines, what you may know about straight lines, if you've got two lines that have the same gradient and go through the same point, they must be what's called collinear, they must be the same straight line, because essentially you've got the same gradient, it's perpendicular, and you've got the same plus c, because it goes through the same point. And so therefore, o to d, or more specifically, o to g, o to g must go through, go over if you like, D to G, and it must be an extension of D to G. It must be the same line, just extended line segment. That then leads you on to the two right angle triangles which you can see. We can also label, before we get into doing anything with these right angle triangles, 2 minus R because the radius, like we've said, of the yellow semicircle is 2 and so this must be 2 minus r because we're taking away the r that we've already got. Okay now we can label this side x so that's from o to e and that's because we don't know what that is but we can work it out as we're going to see. So using Pythagoras we have got 2 minus r squared and so this is Pythagoras for o e d that triangle 2 minus r squared the hypotenuse is equal to x squared plus r squared. Now we're going to expand the bracket there and so we get this 4 minus 4r plus r squared is equal to x squared plus r squared. And the next thing to do there uh, logically would be to cancel out the r squareds on both sides and that gives us this. 4 minus 4r is equal to x squared. Now, we can leave it like that, and you could do your solution with it like that, with a little bit more working out. But what we could also do, and you might want to do, is to simplify this to x. So before I square root both sides, I am going to factorise out the 4, and it leaves me with this. 4 brackets 1 minus r is equal to x squared. Okay, and then we've got, if we square root both sides, 2 square root 1 minus r is equal to x. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to tidy that all up. So we're going to put it up here, make it nice and neat. So 2 square root 1 minus r is equal to x. And I could replace the x in my diagram with that, but I'm not going to just yet. What I am going to do is I'm going to do Pythagoras again, but this time with triangle CED. I get this. So my hypotenuse, 1 plus r squared, is equal to 1 plus x squared plus r squared. And from there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the x again. Well, I'm going to replace the x, not again, but I'm going to replace the x with what I worked out x to be in terms of r. That gives me this. So 1 plus r all squared equals 1 plus 2 square root 1 minus r all squared plus r squared. Now, it looks quite messy at the moment, but at least everything is in terms of r, so we should be able to solve that. So the next step is to start squaring everything and get rid of the, getting rid of the brackets. We get this big thing. So r squared plus 2r plus 1. That's pretty straightforward. But then we get 1 plus 4 root 1 minus r plus 4 minus 4r plus r squared. And again, what we're going to do here is we're going to cancel the r squareds. And then we're going to cancel the 1s. I'm going to end up with something a bit neater like this. Now, at this point, I want to get everything that is basically outside of my square root onto one side, so then I can just square both sides. So let's go through the motions and do that. We're going to add 4r to both sides. 6r is equal to this. We're going to take away the 4. 6r minus 4 is equal to this. And then we're going to divide by 4. 6 divided by 4 is equivalent to 3 over 2, and 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. So we get 3 over 2, r minus 1 is equal to square root 1 minus r. Now, we're going to square both sides here, and we get this. 3 over 2, r minus 1, all squared, is equal to 1 minus r. Now, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the bracket again. I'm going to get 9 over 4, because 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is 9 over 4. r squared minus 3r plus 1 is equal to 1 minus r. And <laughs> once again, we're going to cancel out the 1s. And we're going to get this. We're going to add the r to both sides. So it's equal to 0. And then we're going to factorise out the r. We, actually, we could do that. But we could also times everything by 4. That might make it easier first. Let's times everything by 4. We get this. So 9r squared minus 8r is equal to 0. And then we're going to factorise out the r. And we've got this, and that will give us two solutions. So it will give us either r is 0, or r is equal to 8 over 9. Now, r being 0 is a bit of a problem, and actually can't be true, because if r is 0, then it just, well, it wouldn't work, would it? Because then we wouldn't have the green semicircle being half of the yellow semicircle in terms of diameter, because then the pink circle wouldn't exist basically so we can't have that so that means our only actual solution is 8 over 9 units so the radius is equal to 8 over 9 I hope that if you tried this problem yourself you were able to get that answer and if you did like this problem don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel because I release a new video every week solving problems Thank you for watching and I will see you next week for another problem solving video. Till then, bye bye.